Number 12. Bob Barker, the iconic American television game show host, passed away at the age of 99 due to natural causes on August 26th. Barker was a household name, best known for hosting CBS's The Price is Right from 1972 to 2007, making it the longest-running game show in North American television history. Prior to that, he also hosted Truth or Consequences from 1956 to 1975. Born in Darrington, Washington, Barker had humble beginnings and spent much of his youth on the Rosebud Indian Reservation. He was an enrolled member of the Sioux Tribe and served in the United States Navy Reserve during World War II. His broadcasting career began in radio before he made the leap to television in 1956. Barker wasn't just a television personality. He was an advocate for animal rights, supporting organizations like People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals and the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. In recognition of his 50-year television career, he retired in 2007, but continued to make occasional appearances until 2015. Barker received numerous awards and accolades, including 19 Daytime Emmy Awards. He was married to Dorothy Jo Gideon from 1945 until her death in 1981. A trailblazer in the world of television, Barker was renowned for his charismatic personality and ethical advocacy, making him a beloved figure in American pop culture. He leaves behind an enduring legacy that will not be forgotten. Number 11. Bernie Marsden, the iconic guitarist known primarily for his work with the band Whitesnake, passed away on the evening of August 24th. He was 72 years old and died with his wife and two daughters by his side. The cause of death has not been disclosed. Marsden's extensive music career spanned multiple decades and saw him perform with numerous bands, but he will forever be remembered for his collaboration with David Coverdale and Whitesnake, co-writing hits like Here I Go Again, a multi-million selling chart topper. Marsden's musical journey began in local Buckingham bands before he got his first professional gig with UFO in 1972. Over the years, he played alongside several prominent musicians and bands, including Cozy Powell's Hammer and Babe Ruth. Marsden's path crossed with David Coverdale when both were part of Pace Ashton Lord, a post-deep purple band formed by John Lord and Ian Pace. Throughout his career, Marsden received numerous accolades, including being crowned the Lord of the Blues at the HRH Awards in 2021. His last solo album, Kings, reached number 18 in the UK album sales chart. In 2015, the University of Buckingham honored him with an honorary Master of Arts degree. Marsden's former bandmate, David Coverdale, expressed his condolences on Twitter, a testament to the lasting relationships he built throughout his life. Bernie Marsden leaves behind an indelible legacy in rock and blues, enriched by his skill, versatility, and undeniable passion for music. Number 10. Arlene Sorkin, a multifaceted talent in the American entertainment industry, passed away at the age of 67 on August 24th due to complications from multiple sclerosis. Sorkin was known for a wide range of accomplishments, from portraying the memorable Calliope Jones on NBC's daytime soap opera, Days of Our Lives, to being the inspiration and original voice for Harley Quinn, the iconic DC Comics character. Born on October 14, 1955 in Washington, D.C., Sorkin began her career in the late 70s as a member of the comedy group, The High-Heeled Women. She achieved mainstream recognition in 1984 when she landed the role of Calliope Jones, a character she reprised multiple times over the years. Sorkin later ventured into writing, contributing to projects like Tiny Toon Adventures and the 1997 Jennifer Aniston film Picture Perfect. Perhaps her most lasting legacy will be Harley Quinn, a character co-created by her college friend Paul Dini for Batman the Animated Series. Sorkin not only provided the character's voice, but also served as the inspiration for her personality and mannerisms. The character of Harley Quinn was so beloved that she became a regular in the DC animated universe, in part due to Sorkin's captivating voice work. Sorkin was married to television writer-producer Christopher Lloyd, best known for producing the TV series Frasier. Together, they had two sons, Eli and Owen. Her death is a significant loss to the worlds of acting and storytelling, as she leaves behind a body of work that resonated with audiences and influenced an entire generation of creatives. She will be remembered for her versatility, her unique voice, 
and her ability to bring complex characters to life. Number 9. Brian McBride, influential musician and debate coach, passed away at the age of 53 on August. No cause or exact date of death has been provided. McBride was perhaps best known for his musical contributions as one half of the ambient drone duo Stars of the Lid, formed with Adam Wiltsey in the early 1990s. They became a cornerstone in the ambient music community, crafting sonic landscapes that captivated audiences worldwide. McBride, originally from Austin, Texas, also had a solo career, releasing two notable albums. When the detail lost its freedom and the effective disconnect, both on the cranky label. Additionally, he was a part of the musical project Bell Gardens, alongside musician Kenneth James Gibson. Their works include Full Sundown Assembly and Slow Dawns for Lost Conclusions. Beyond music, McBride was deeply involved in the policy debate community. He directed the University of Texas National Institute of Forensics High School debate camp during the summers and coached policy debate at the University of Southern California. His multifaceted contributions extended to being an artist and sign maker, showcasing his wide range of talents and interests. As condolences pour in from fans and colleagues alike, McBride's lasting influence on ambient music and the debate community will not be forgotten. He leaves behind a rich legacy that encapsulates his creative vision and commitment to education. Number 8. Rich Stubbler, a distinguished American football coach who left a lasting impact on the Canadian Football League, passed away at the age of 74 on August 27. Stubbler, a five-time Grey Cup champion, predominantly served as a defensive coordinator and was also formerly the head coach of the Toronto Argonauts. Starting his coaching journey in 1971 at Roaring Fork High School in Colorado, Stubbler moved up the ranks to work at the NCAA level, in the Arena Football League, and eventually in the CFL. One of his standout contributions was the EDGE defense system, a strategy that significantly improved defensive stats for the teams he coached, notably the Edmonton Eskimos in the 1990s. Stubbler also ventured into coaching at the University of Oregon, though the defenses under him could not mirror the CFL's success. He returned to the CFL and continued to make significant contributions, including a fifth Grey Cup win with the Calgary Stampeders in 2014. His final coaching role was as an assistant coach with the Toronto Argonauts in 2021, though he left the CFL briefly for different coaching opportunities, including a spell at Cedar Ridge High School in Colorado and the Arena Football League. He always returned to Canadian football, where he became a beloved figure and a key strategist. His death leaves a void in the world of football coaching, and his contributions to the CFL in particular will not be forgotten. Number 7. Clay Matili, American billionaire and business icon, passed away at the age of 82 on August 26. Known for transforming the IAMS company into a pet food empire, Mathiel sold it to Procter & Gamble for a record-breaking $2.3 billion in 1999. Born on January 11, 1941, in Portage, Ohio, he was the eldest child in a farming family. A high achiever from the start, he graduated top of his high school class at 16 and went on to earn a business degree from Ohio Northern University in 1962. Beginning his career as an accountant, he soon found his true calling at the IAMS company becoming its sole owner by 1982. His commitment to quality, R&D, and exceptional customer service catapulted the company to international fame. His unique approach to business also included a money-back guarantee and a customer support department that went beyond answering just pet food-related queries. But Mathiel's impact wasn't limited to the boardroom. Following the sale of IAMS, he distributed $100 million among his employees and committed another $100 million to community projects in Dayton. He also served on several nonprofit boards, focusing on education, nutrition, and social justice. Mathiel's diversified business interests continue under the umbrella of Merian Capital, founded and chaired by his youngest son, Mike. Survived by his wife, Marianne, and their five children, Matile leaves a legacy of not just corporate success, but community betterment and generous philanthropy. His life's work serves as an inspiration for both budding entrepreneurs and established leaders alike. Number 6. Samuel Joseph Wurzelbacher, commonly known as Joe the Plumber, 
passed away at the age of 49 from pancreatic cancer on August 27. Wurzelbacher, a Toledo, Ohio native, gained national fame during the 2008 U.S. presidential election when he questioned Democratic candidate Barack Obama on small business taxation. Obama's response about spreading wealth became a rallying point for Republicans, who labeled the sentiment as socialist. Wurzelbacher was considering launching a plumbing business at the time, earning him the nickname Joe the Plumber. He subsequently became a symbol of middle-class concerns in John McCain's presidential campaign. Both McCain and Obama frequently referred to him, and he was interviewed on a broad range of subjects. A conservative commentator, motivational speaker, and political activist, Wurzelbacher ran unsuccessfully for a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives in 2012, representing Ohio's 9th Congressional District. Two years later, he took up employment in a Jeep factory. An avid Republican, he voted for Donald Trump in the 2016 presidential election. Though he never held political office, Wurzelbacher became an emblematic figure in American politics, personifying the concerns and aspirations of many small business owners and blue-collar workers. His passing comes just weeks after he publicly announced his cancer diagnosis. His death has left a void in political discussions around the American middle class, and he will be remembered as a unique character in the annals of American political history. Number 5. James Case, beloved saxophonist, passed away at the age of 40 after a courageous two-year battle with colon cancer on the morning of August 28. The sad news was confirmed through social media, describing Casey as a remarkable human being, committed to both his art and public health advocacy. Born in Tacoma Park, Maryland, and raised in Phoenix, Arizona, Casey's musical journey began at an impressively young age. He started playing drums at just three years old and embraced the saxophone by age nine. He attended Berklee College of Music in Boston and quickly became a prominent figure in the music scene. His talents led him to collaborate with bands like Solive, Lettuce, and eventually the Trey Anastasio Band. In addition to his musical career, Casey was an advocate for early colon cancer screenings, particularly in the black community. Despite his diagnosis in July 2021 and the ensuing medical treatments, he continued to perform and released an EP, with proceeds going to fund colon cancer screenings for the uninsured. Casey's discography boasts collaborations with a range of notable artists, from Dave Matthews Band and Fish to Megan Trainer and J. Cole. His last project was a short film, Music as Medicine, a James Casey story, advocating for early colon cancer screening. Survived by his wife, Ayla Cobb Casey, parents Dwayne John Casey and Gina Renee Miles Casey, and siblings Rachel Jean Cato and Stephen Dwayne Casey, donations in his memory can be made to the Colorectal Cancer Alliance. His profound impact on both music and public health advocacy will continue to resonate. Number four, Bob Feldman, an iconic American songwriter and record producer, passed away on August 23rd at the age of 83. Known for his collaborations with fellow writers Jerry Goldstein and Richard Gotterer, Feldman penned timeless classics like My Boyfriend's Back, I Want Candy, and Sorrow. Born Robert C. Feldman in Brooklyn, New York, he was raised in an Orthodox Jewish household and had even briefly studied to become a cantor. A graduate of Abraham Lincoln High School, he rubbed shoulders with future stars like Neil Sedaka, Neil Diamond, and Barbara Streisand. Feldman first burst into the public eye as a dancer on Alan Freed's WNW TV show, The Big Beat, where he also co-wrote the theme song. In 1962, Feldman, Goldstein, and Gotterer formed FGG Productions, leading to a series of hit singles that would become anthems for a generation. The trio even formed their own group, The Strange Loves, responding to the British invasion with hits like Carolyn and Nighttime. As Feldman once said, I was the dreamer, Jerry was the schemer, and Richie was the voice of reason. Later in his career, Feldman moved to California and then to Nashville, continuing to make an impact across genres, including country music. In 2002, he co-wrote Dusty Drake's debut country hit, and then. In 2019, he took a literary turn, publishing a book titled, Simply Put, Thoughts and Feelings from the Heart. Feldman leaves behind a lasting legacy in American music and is survived by two daughters, Kyle and Mari. He was also the biological father of actor Corey Feldman, 
His influence resonates across decades and genres, proving that good music indeed knows no boundaries. Number three, Walt Curtis, the self-proclaimed dirty word poet and the unofficial poet laureate of Portland, Oregon, passed away at the age of 82. Known for his distinct blend of raw emotion, societal commentary, and unabashed sexuality, Curtis was a cultural mainstay in Portland's artistic landscape for decades. He passed away peacefully, leaving the world much as he lived in it, on his own terms, according to his sister Cleo Buckley. For Curtis, the streets of Portland were both his stage and his muse. Known for his pantheistic philosophies and green politics, he captured the soul of the city in the words he penned and the public readings he conducted, often with arms passionately flailing and a mischievous smile on his face. The state of Oregon recognized his contribution to literature with the Stuart H. Holbrook Literary Legacy Award in 1991. In a place teeming with artists and writers, Curtis stood out for his refusal to compromise his artistic vision for academic or social acceptance. He was unapologetically himself, whether that meant reading poetry at anti-war rallies or barrooms, or challenging societal norms through his art. His passing marks not just the end of a life, but the turning of a page in the annals of Portland's rich cultural history. As poet and artist Leanne Grable said, he was magical. I am sorry more people did not know him during his younger years. Walt Curtis leaves behind a legacy that can be neither confined nor easily defined, a legacy as complex and intriguing as the man himself. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number two, Chadwick Boseman, the groundbreaking actor best known for his role as King T'Challa in Marvel's Black Panther, has died of colon cancer at the age of 43 on August 28th in 2020. According to a statement, he passed away at his home in Los Angeles, surrounded by his wife and family. Shockingly, Bozeman had been battling the disease for four years, but chose to keep the diagnosis private. Before achieving global fame as the Black Panther, Bozeman came to prominence portraying real-life icons such as Jackie Robinson in 42 and James Brown in Get On Up. Yet it was his role in the 2018 blockbuster Black Panther that made him a household name. Not only did the film win critical acclaim and gross over $1.3 billion globally, but it also became a cultural phenomenon, boasting a predominantly black cast and a black director, Ryan Coogler. Bozeman's significance extended far beyond the screen. He was a symbol of representation and empowerment, reshaping what it means to be young, gifted, and black, as he himself noted. The film also broke barriers by being the first superhero movie to receive an Oscar nomination for Best Picture. Throughout his battle with cancer, Bozeman continued to work on films like Marshall, The Five Bloods, and Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, often between surgeries and chemotherapy sessions. A sequel to Black Panther was in development, with Bozeman slated to return, making his death all the more stunning. Tributes have poured in from all corners, including fellow actors Mark Ruffalo and Dwayne Johnson, as well as political figures like Democratic vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris. Born in South Carolina to a nurse and an upholstery entrepreneur, Bozeman was a proud alumnus of Howard University. His life and career have left an indelible mark on Hollywood and the world at large, making his untimely death a monumental loss. Number 1. Tatyana Kuznetsova, a trailblazing Soviet cosmonaut who once held the record for being the youngest person ever selected by a government spaceflight program, passed away on August 28, 2018. She was 77. Born in Moscow in 1941, Kuznetsova initially pursued a career in stenography before taking up parachuting as a hobby. Her skydiving prowess made her a regional and national champion by 1961. These skills caught the attention of Soviet space program recruiters, who selected her in February 1962 from over 400 applicants to train for a solo mission aboard a Vostok spacecraft. Kuznetsova was just 20 at the time, and the selection made her an early favorite to become the first woman in space. However, Kuznetsova faced setbacks in the grueling training regime and was ultimately removed from active astronaut training. She was recalled in 1965 for the two-woman Voskhod 5 mission, but that project was canceled before she had a chance to go to space. Although she retired from active cosmonaut training in 1969, 
she remained involved in the program, assisting with geophysical experiments and studies. Kuznetsova continued her service in the Air Force Reserves from 1979 and retired in 1991 with the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Her life stands as a testament to the pioneering spirit of the early days of space exploration. Even though she never made it to space, her legacy remains, inspiring generations of future astronauts and highlighting the contributions women can make in traditionally male-dominated fields. You can continue watching these videos about recent celebrity deaths in June on your screen. To keep yourself updated, you can turn on notifications.